Hi, thank you for tuning in. Um, my name is Erin, uh, and I would firstly like to acknowledge that I am talking to you from the lands of the Ghana people and pay my respects to their elders past, present and future. Um, before I talk about the citizen science project uh, that I am leading at the moment, I would firstly just like to introduce myself. So I'm a um, ABRS, Australian Biological Resources Study Postdoctoral Fellow. I'm based at the University of Adelaide. My project's also supported by the South Australian Museum and the Environment Institute. And I work on wasps. So I work on a group of wasps called the Microgastrines. Uh, they are um, quite small. They're only a couple of millimetres long and they're parasitoids of caterpillars. So they're really useful in environments. They're important for controlling native caterpillar populations. They're also quite useful as biological control agents for caterpillar pests. Uh, and I'm a taxonomist and a taxonomist's job is all about biodiversity documentation. So taxonomy is the science of classifying living organisms of delimiting, naming and describing species. But we think that less than 33% of the estimated 225,000 insect species in Australia actually have a formal scientific name and description, which means approximately 70% of the insects that we think exist in Australia don't even have a name. They don't have a name, they don't have a diagnosis, which is what allows you to tell it apart from other closely related species. Um, we don't know anything about them. And this obviously has some massive issues or causes massive issues uh, for downstream research for things such as being able to monitor environmental change, monitoring how ecosystems are responding to things like bushfires, um, monitoring biosecurity threats, uh, finding good biological control agents, um, conservation practices. You know, there's all kinds of things that rely on us having at least a basic understanding of the, of the animals and the plants and the fungi in our environment. And yet for most of the insects, you know, we don't even have a name for them yet. So Insect Investigators is all about taking this process of taxonomy into schools. So it's about connecting school students with the process of biodiversity discovery and documentation. And it's also about raising the awareness of the science of taxonomy. Uh, it's, a, it's a field that not that many people uh, in the general public perhaps recognize the word for or um, understand the importance of. So the idea of this project is to really get it out there um, as a science that is just as important and just as exciting as some of those um, perhaps more media savvy fields. Insect Investigators is also about building the DNA barcode library for Australian insects. So a DNA barcode is a little section of the genome which allows us to get a good estimate of um, how species are related to each other and how many species there might be from a group of specimens. It works kind of like a barcode in a supermarket. So for example, the barcode that you have on a can of soup is different to the barcode on a packet of pasta. And when you go through the checkout, the scanner is able to tell you what product it is that you're scanning. And in the best case scenarios, DNA barcodes work similarly for species. So we can have a look at this little section of the genome and it might be able to tell us what species we're actually looking at by looking at how different it is from the DNA barcode of other species. Is it Insect Investigators is all about actually putting names to and describing these species in collaboration with communities so that this process of taxonomy doesn't just happen by researchers like me in museums and universities, but actually happens with communities and, and with school children. The project brings together probably my two loves of working with people. So before I started my PhD, I was a science communicator um, and my love of working with bugs. And we ran an initial trial over 2019 and 2020 with four schools, uh, which we were able to do thanks to the help of one of the um, Australian Citizen Science Association seed grants. So thank you very much for that. Um, it allows us to buy the equipment for these four schools and run a little pilot project just to see what worked and what didn't. So we ran the pilot with Macclesfield Primary School in the Adelaide Hills, with Wakery and Ramco Primary Schools in the Riverland uh, and with Cow Area School on the Air Peninsula. So each of the schools set up one of these, which is called a malaise trap. It kind of looks like a large tent. Uh, it collects insects passively, so it doesn't have an attractant or a lure 
just the insects that fly into the tent. Uh, instinctively, then want to go up. Um, so if you've ever had an insect in you know, a glass jar or something, it'll go up towards the light. They go up into a bottle of preserving liquid. So for each of the schools I ran out, I went out to the school and I ran a workshop about insects and taxonomy and biodiversity. Uh, and we set up the trap together either on their schoolyard or on um, a nearby area of native vegetation. And then uh, the teachers and the students then monitored the trap for several weeks and they sent in the collection bottles with the samples into me at the university. And so what we get when we open one of these bottles is something that looks like this, uh, insect soup. So our job then in the lab is to sort this insect soup into the different groups of insects. So sort the wasps from the ants, from the beetles, from the fly. Uh, as a wasp researcher, I am obviously most interested in that group. Uh, and we, I um, took lots of images and sent lots of information back to the schools about the different wasps that they were catching. Uh, and all four schools actually caught um, one of the group of wasps that I work on, so these little caterpillar parasitoids. And because each of those four schools actually found a new species of this group of wasps, uh, I worked with them to come up with what they would like to name it. So the uh, school on the Air Peninsula, Cow Area School, called their species Franklin Harborensis, which is um, a Latinized version of the council area, Franklin Harbor. Uh, the school, uh, Ramco Primary School, called get theirs Ramco Marmorata. So uh, Marmorata is Latin adjective meaning marbled. They thought the wasp looked like it was marbled stone. Uh, Wakery Yetis was the name that Wakery Primary School gave to uh, honour the Yetis, which is their youth environment team who led the project. And the school in Macclesfield called, called their Dryoplanetus, which is Greek for bush wanderer. Uh, and it was caught at the top bush block. So we published these four um, species as proper scientific formal um, species descriptions with the help of the schools in naming them. Um, and this is open access, so you can go and check it out if you would like to wade through um, some wasp species descriptions. So I asked the students at the end of um, the project what their favorite part of of doing it was. And this is just a word cloud with the size of the word representing how many times it came up in the students' um, responses. And so, you know, finding the new wasp or finding the new species came up quite a lot. So that was really exciting. I also asked the students at the end of the project um, to respond with whether they thought anything had changed uh, about their interests or opinions um, by being part of the project. So this is a self-reflection questionnaire. Um, and on the y-axis, it's just a number of responses. And the different colors, uh, dark blue and light blue are increased, either a lot or a bit. Um, gray is the student felt it stayed the same. Orange is decreased a little bit and red is decreased a lot. So uh, the student's interest in, interest in insects and for over half the students, they felt that their interest in insects had increased. Uh, most of the students felt that their knowledge about insects in their local area had increased. Uh, about half the students felt that their desire to protect the environment in their local area had increased. Uh, about half the students felt their connection to nature had increased. This is obviously you know, a fairly vague and fuzzy statement, but positive all the same. Um, just over half felt their desire to spend out time had increased. And um, about a third felt their interest in pursuing a career in science had increased. Obviously self-reflection results like this um, probably shouldn't be taken with too much credence, but um, it, was, it was really positive for me to feel that the students at least felt like they were getting something out of the project. So with that pilot under our belt, we were able to um, pull together an amazing collaborative team and apply for um, some funding. So we were really uh, lucky and, and I know we were very privileged uh, to be able to get one of the um, uh, Australian Government Citizen Science Grants in the last round, which is allowing us to run this project on a much bigger scale.
So for the next iteration of the project with the help of um, the Australian Government Citizen Science Grant, we're now expanding the project to 50 schools across regional South Australia, Queensland and Western Australia. Uh, we're also hoping to connect schools with um, land care groups, particularly for schools that maybe don't have anywhere on site that they can put the trap out. We're hoping we might be able to um, build some connections with their local land care reserve um, and get some partnerships happening that way. It also won't just be me doing the taxonomy. So I'm hoping to involve lots of taxonomists with expertise in different insect groups. So the project will work very similarly to the pilot. All of the 50 schools will uh, run a malaise trap on their um, schoolyard or nearby native vegetation uh, for four weeks in term one, 2022. The insects will be sent here to the lab. Uh, we'll sort them, pick out the things that the taxonomists are particularly interested in. Uh, we'll then be DNA barcoding them, so sequencing that little bit of the genome that helps us recognize species. We'll be sending them uh, the specimens off to our wonderful taxonomists who are experts in all the different groups of insects. Uh, and all the, way, the way, all the way along the project, and we'll be providing information back to schools, running online um, Q and A's and, and um, sessions with our scientists. And the hope is that uh, some of our taxonomists will be able to identify new species in the sample and work in collaboration with the schools um, to name and describe and publish so. So there is just an incredible team um, that's been part of this project and is making it happen. Um, I'm the project manager, but we've got uh, the incredible Andy Howe in Queensland from USC, who's running the Queensland side of things. Um, Dr. Sylvia Clark uh, here in South Australia, looking after the SA schools. Dr. Karen Cullen in WA, looking after the WA schools. Um, Alana is looking after our specimen management. Brock is doing our websites and socials. Steve Dinellen from the SA Museum is overseeing things. Leanne from the South Australian Museum is making sure our educational resources are up to scratch, as, as is Kate from um, the Science Teacher Association in South Australia. And our museums are on board, which is really great. So we've got our collection managers and curators from the three state museums of SA Queensland and WA, making sure that all the specimens that are collected in this project are not just discarded at the end. They're all going to go into the collection where they'll be used by scientists um, for many, many years into the future. So if you would like to hear um, more about insect investigators, I think by the time that the um, that you will actually be hearing this talk at the conference, we will have closed applications from schools. Um, at the time I'm recording it, we're just about to open them. So hopefully that went well. Um, you can head to our website and we will be constantly updating that with, with news and stories. And um, we're hoping it'll be a really successful iteration of the project. So thank you so much for listening. Um, and I will keep answering questions in the chat uh, and look forward to um, hearing all about all the amazing citizen science going on in Australia for the rest of the conference. Thanks everyone.